Hey guys, Kayla Marie Butler here from IvoryMix.com and I am sharing with you today my review of your Instagram and your Pinterest accounts. What's interesting about this is just 12 hours ago, I posted on Instagram stories and on my Facebook page that I wanted to review your accounts and I got hundreds of responses of people asking to have me review their Pinterest and their Instagram account. I think this is insane. I think it's wonderful. I really want to give as much advice as I can. So I'm recording this and I'm going to run through as many accounts and as much advice as I possibly can. Now, just real quick, if you're new here, what you need to know about me is I started my own business through social media. I didn't know what kind of business I wanted and it just kind of blossomed through the interactions that I had with my audience in conjunction with what it is that I enjoyed doing. So I have a stock photography membership, I teach people about marketing, and I do all of that through organic search. And I get my organic traffic from Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. And I grow my email list, which then grows my membership and keeps my business alive. So people are generally interested in learning more about what they could do that's similar to how I grew my business on their own Pinterest and Instagram accounts. So on Pinterest, I have um, over 23 or more thousand followers currently. Um, I get 50% at least of my traffic from Pinterest. And on Instagram, I have 17,000 followers and um, get have a very engaged audience there as well and i have an email list of over 37,000 email subscribers that continues to grow so um without further ado let's just get started i'm just gonna grab as many accounts as i can and review them here so let's get started okay so i'm just gonna get started at the top of the list Okay, so immediately when I'm on this account, I I know what this account is all about because the bio is completely filled in. What I wish I could see is some existing stories. So having some stories every day, whether it's one story or a couple of stories, that would be something that I would aim for to be posting in your stories at least once a day because it gets people engaged. Whether they've seen your most recent posts or not, they will more likely look at your stories on a day-to-day -day basis versus visiting your profile. The next thing that I would look at is your individual captions. Um, I already took a look at these and what I really enjoy about your captions is that you do the headline to deadline technique, which is basically put something really interesting and um, captivating in the first paragraph of your caption and then the end of your par the end of your caption needs to be a call to action of some kind or getting them to take some kind of action whether it's leaving a comment asking a question answering your question clicking a link going to your stories or sending you a dm or tagging a friend some kind of action at the bottom of your caption and you do that very clearly because you ask questions right so that is a a caption the one thing that i would shy away from is multiple call to action so i do see here that you say link in bio and also you're asking a question you're actually asking multiple questions and you did get some people to engage and answer your questions i would focus on um, maybe just one single question and you might get more engagement um, on your individual posts if you focus your call to actions one at a time in your Instagram posts. And then you can really dive into what types of call to actions work better versus the ones that don't. Because if you're putting multiple call to actions in an Instagram post and you're getting comments, you're not really sure which call to action got them to engage. So on this Pinterest account, I can clearly see that um, you have a link and it's a verified website. So you are verified, which is good. That's a good thing. The um, thing that I immediately look at on a 
Pinterest account is the description. So leading working mamas towards adventure and spontaneity through clearing clutter physical, digital, and mental, and managing the home effectively, which I really love. What I would consider is, are people finding you organically on Pinterest, or are people searching you out on Pinterest? And more often than not, people are not searching you out on Pinterest, so they're not looking for Kate and Trudy, and they're not looking for Jessica. What they're looking for are ways to clear the clutter physically, digitally, and mentally. So I would consider changing your profile name because right now you have a lot of first names, which is, the, which is fine, I totally get it, that's your brand. But you might consider putting a keyword that is searchable that's related to the majority of your content. So in this case, it might be um, decluttering, it might be um, cleaning, clearing, might be managing the home. Consider keywords that really signify what people are searching for. And you might look at your most popular content, the content that's currently being found very easily on Pinterest or Google, and using those keywords, specifically if they are very related and highly related to your content. Um, so, I'll, I'm going to click on C boards and you have mental load as your first board, practical tools, tips and tricks. Okay. And it's not a very full board. It has 12 pins. So I see a lot of your boards don't have very many pins on them. Um, so my first tip for you is to go through all of your boards and identify whether they are actually aligned with your ideal audience. Um, is vintage letterboard something that you, this board right here, vintage letterboard, is that something you're selling, promoting an affiliate link for? Is it something that you write blog posts and talk about often? Is it something that you're creating content for often? Or is it just bringing in people who are generally interested in your topics? If that's the case, that is totally fine, but you need to be adding content to that board if it truly is bringing in more people to your account and getting people more aware of who you are and possibly following you, um, then I would be adding content to that board more frequently. Um, 19 pins on that board tells me you don't add very much content to those boards. In fact, all of your boards tend to feel that way. And so what I would do is I would start to ve get very specific on whether the boards are serving you and your audience. Um, and if they are, then I would make sure that you get at least 50 unique and visually unique pins on those boards. And preferably, since you are a verified website, those pins lead back to your website. So at that point, I would go to your website and I would make sure that you have boards that send people to the different categories on your website. I'm not gonna get into your specific website, but I can tell by coming to your account that you do pin a lot, that you do have a lot of boards, but none of these boards are very full. So you don't pin to them very regularly. So if I'm gonna follow just one of your boards, I'm probably never gonna see a new pin from you because you hardly ever pin to those boards. So. Uh, start pinning more frequently from your account to those boards. The next thing, if I'm just going to click on one of the boards, none of your boards, or at least this particular board, doesn't have a full description. So I would definitely add keyword description. So this has a headline or a title, but then within that board, you can actually edit the description to match the keywords that people might search for. So in this particular board, you might put in keywords that relate to the pins that perform really well on this board. So how to reduce your mental load, life-changing um, tips and tricks, uh, mental, lighten your mental load. What are the words that people are searching in Pinterest or on Google that will help this board get found? Now, it may help it get found by putting in additional keywords, 
but until you actually start adding more um, pins and getting pins on this board to perform well for you, the le less likely this board is going to get found. So create good pins to go to this board, but also add keyword rich descriptions to this board. Okay, so here we are on another Instagram account, Propel Virtual Solutions, um, Copy Content Writer. I love that is in your description because if I go to, to Instagram and I search Content Writer, your name and your account is going to come up. But let's go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna look at some of your, let's just go a few weeks back. So this one, Writer's Block, I'm gonna click on it. So you have a lot of really great copy, okay? Like, bookmark, share. If you're looking for a content writer, DM me. And you have no uh, comments on this, which is fine. Sometimes content doesn't need to get comments. I'm sure perhaps you got some people to bookmark it or maybe some people to DM me. What I might consider for you though is putting this list in the graphic and putting writer's block as your headline okay because the list aspect of it is visual it's immediately like ah this is a value but the words writer's block is not something that i'm going to click on to learn more about but if i'm scrolling through instagram and i see a list i'm like what is this list i want to see all the various different things in this list because i love lists right or i want to learn something and this is clearly going to teach me something or tell me something interesting so um i would definitely consider switching your your uh, strategy here. So when you're sharing tips, put the tips on the graphic and your headline in the caption. You can put the tips in the caption as well, but they visually will do better and perform better and get more clicks if you put them in the graphic. It's just facts. Okay, so here we are on another Pinterest account. This is called The Little Mom Aid. She's a blogger or they consider themselves a blogger and a TPT seller. So what I would consider is whether or not um, you want to rank high in search for the term blogger because blogger is in your name, at least on Pinterest. Um, it's going to come up in the search results and lots of people identify themselves as blogger. So if you're trying to um, rank for those kinds of terms if you're teaching other bloggers or if you're attracting people who are looking for bloggers then keep it in your name but if there are additional keywords that you might want to be using instead of blogger you might want to replace blogger with something else um, I, I like that you have your name includes the word mom and TPT seller or teachers pay teachers um, if those of you watching this don't know what that is, uh, I can tell you that your account, if I search TPT seller, TPT seller, you are at the top of the search results when it comes to people. So if I search TPT seller, you're in the top search results, which is fantastic. So you're doing a great job there. But I would consider whether or not you could use that space of blogger for something else and I will help you by going to your boards to see what other kinds of information you are considering uh, at the top of your important content um, so you have maths stem activities um, you know fourth grade fifth grade that kind of thing back to school Halloween arts and crafts meals and recipes so I would just take us take a second and think about what it is you're trying to rank for and review whether blogger is what you want to be ranking for. Because I, I think that if you are making most of your revenue from your TPT store, then you might want to put additional keywords in there that helps you rank for that topic not necessarily blogger. So take a moment to look at that. The next thing that I'll look at are your top boards. So I'm seeing your top boards, STEM activities, TPT seller tools, maths. These have very few pins in them. I would add more pins to these boards 
um, up to 50 and hopefully they send people back to your account. I would make sure that as many pins as possible on your best top boards are sending people to your account, especially if you're a verified account. So um, these do not go to your account. So I'm not sure why they're at the top. Of your boards I see your shop boards on over here store and uh, the little mom made but the little mom made has 993 pins but the rest of the boards uh, that come after that have 11 14 and 11 so uh, if those are important topics for you then you need to be pinning the pins on your little mom made board onto those additional boards as well um, because you're the content creator and verified website for this account so you need to be putting out content for your website so whatever you can do to create content that sends people to your account and then to your website put that content on your boards um, as much as you possibly can. I think you're doing a good job as far as your description, your link, putting links in your description, um, and being a verified account. So you're doing great things there. Uh, if I go to activity and I just search for your latest pins, I can see that you are pinning things around uh, recipes, which I don't know support the content that you want to rank for. So consider if you're saving recipes for yourself or for your actual audience. If you think that you're bringing in the right people by pinning recipe, then only you're gonna know that, but really take a look at whether that supports um, what you're hoping to rank for but otherwise i think you're doing a great job i think you've got um a good start just fill out those boards more um the next thing that i want to just look at on your account is the board description so if i go to stem activities what i'm seeing here is that you only have the the board name and you don't have a description so fill out that description with keywords um, so that this board will rank for STEM activities and resources even more. Okay, so here we are on another Pinterest account, the Minted Latte Financial Independence and Retire Early. I like this because those are keywords that people will search. I also like it because it's your brand name, so you've managed to combine searchable keywords with your brand name and put it in your name, and that is um, a match made in heaven. You're a verified account, which is great, and you have your account uh, description filled in. What I want to just dive into are your boards and your descriptions because I'm finding that uh, these are the biggest things that people are missing. So go to your top boards, your top performing boards. So I'm looking at personal finance group board, and I'm not sure if this is your board or not, but if I go to it, it has a description. So it's probably doing fairly well. I'm not sure whose board this is, but I'm guessing it's not yours, which is fine. That's okay. But you really want to rank for your own account and your content too, because you're the verified content creator on Pinterest. So you need to get your content in front of other people just organically, whether you're on a group board or not. So you want to make sure your pins are searchable, your boards are searchable and your account is searchable regardless of whether you're on in any group boards or not so don't bank all your money into group boards because the group board owner might close that group board I've experienced this I've had a few group boards in the past that I've been on that have closed and then my traffic dropped a little but because I grew other areas of my account it didn't really hurt me that much so make sure that you're focusing on your account and your pins and your information and not just group boards. And I, I think that that tip applies to everybody. Um, so I'm gonna go to your finance tips board and I notice you don't have any description for this board. So number one, go through all of your boards that are directly related to your account and your topic and make sure that every board has a keyword rich description. I don't care if you just put keywords in there and it's not sentences, just put the keywords in there, okay? So just look through that board, see what pins are performing the best and use those keywords, okay? So if um, 
uh, extra cash for the holidays is a, a pin. If this pin does really well on this board, then put that those keywords in the description cash for the holidays extra cash um, maybe buy house maybe uh, out of debt maybe those are the keywords that you put in the description so personal finance tips is a great board name however the description needs to support the words that get searched around personal finance tips because Pinterest is going to go and look for your board and then what's on the board not just in the pins but in the description of the board as well so I'm going to look for anything on this board that is pinned from you so I found one nine legit ways to make extra cash for the holidays this particular um, pin is great it has a great image it has a clear um, description I know what it is um, I know what I'm gonna find when I click on it at least I hope and then the description supports the name of the pin which is awesome um, but you might consider since you put this on your personal finance uh, board you might consider adding more keywords to the description that says um, you know adds words like personal finance um, so you might add a sentence about improve your personal finances or something like that just additional keywords that support not only the pin and the the topic but the boards that you're going to put it on so if you know that you created a blog post and a pin that you're going to pin on onto pinterest and you're going to pin it on your personal finance board and your holidays board and your um, banking board then add those keywords into the description of the pin as well because then when you save it to those various boards you're just supporting the keyword richness of your pin i hope that makes sense and then last but not least when i'm looking through your boards i do see some boards that don't necessarily relate to your niche so i would consider cleaning up those boards or going all in on the boards and making sure that they're fully keyword optimized and that you have at least 50 pins on those boards that go either to your website or content that supports the keywords and that you make a plan to add to those boards consistently because creating a board and then never pinning to it does you no good unless it's got a really great high performing pin that goes to your um, content and your website then it's probably not doing anything for you so take a look at these um, boards that don't have any pins and consider condensing them or getting rid of them making them private moving the high performing pins to high performing boards and then getting rid of them um, just clean up the content a little bit so that it's more uh, specific to your audience okay so here I am on another account I'm excited about it because it's called veganize it vegan desserts so it's a YouTube um, show host and you have a, another vegan account and I'm just gonna click on that account really quick okay so I'm really happy that I clicked on that because it tells me that I'm already on that account so I would consider not putting your um, your name in your description if you have another account put it in there if you have a hashtag that you want to use put it in there but I wouldn't put your account name in your account description instead I would use that precious character space for something else like a hashtag or um, something like that so if you start your own hashtag which I, I highly recommend start your own hashtag so that makes a lot of sense that people will um, resonate with that also relates to your brand so don't brand hashtag your brand so don't be hashtag the veganize it show um that might be something people will naturally do but you don't need to do that what you need to do is create a branded hashtag so veganize it might be the hashtag um or it might be veganize it fam veganize it tribe something like that something that people can identify with so that they're like hey i'm part of the veganize it tribe you know um it really create a hashtag that is branded versus creating a hashtag from your brand i hope that makes sense but um i would definitely consider doing that instead of putting your name in the description because character space on instagram descriptions um is really limited so i would 
think about how you're using that. I do really like your account. I think the aesthetic is coming along, but I want you to, now that your account is very new and you have just 40 followers, I really want you to pay attention to the content that does well. What's getting you the most comments, likes, saves, so you click on your um, you click on your images. You can look at view insights, and then you can see how many saves you've got. So you can also do that on your account insights uh, through the three little lines in the top corner of your app. But I really want you to look at which content is performing well, okay? And then I want you to repeat that formula as much as possible. And I want you to, and I think you're already doing this, going to accounts that are similar to you, competitive to you, or in the same niche as yours, and seeing what kind of accounts or what kind of images are performing really well for them. Not just images, but captions, stories. I really want you to study what seems to be getting the most comments and start replicating that style if it fits for you. Um, the only way with a new account to see what works is to study your competitors and put it into practice and see what sticks. And engagement hack, really put in lots of um, call to actions to get people to leave comments, like and save your content, or um, get them into your stories or get them from your stories to your content. Whatever you can do to get people to engage with your content will tell you whether or not what you're doing is working. And so I really like the topic. You can tell that this kind of image might not perform as well as this image. So that top down flat lay style image might be your best bet. So I would from now on just consider a, doing two weeks worth of content that's only flat lays that's only top down type of photos and see how well you do um, and really consider what's gotten you the most comments okay so this one got a lot of likes and a lot of comments so you know consider how you captioned it and how you can repeat that type of caption going forward. The photos, you could do this kind of a photo with everything. So consider trying that um, and repeating it and uh, just keep going. You're, you're very new to it um, on and this account. So the best thing that I can tell you is just keep going and trying new things and seeing what works. Okay, so here we are on another Instagram account. This is Amble side tails i think that's what it is um shelly is a charlotte mason homeschooler helping homeschool moms flourish and create a delightful and joyful home what i wish i could see here is some kind of a call to action i see that you have your link in your bio which is great but what will i get there i am assuming i will find um something related to homeschooling but what would be better is if there were a link in your bio that sends me to something that I can sign up for or some kind of a blog post or some kind of a page that I will get something specific from because right now it's just your website which is great but if I'm I'm not if I'm not on Google searching for something then what's the reason I'm going to go to your website is just to take a peek that's might that might be something I might do but I probably won't do anything beyond that. So if you want people to do something beyond that, be very clear about what you want people to do, whether it's sign up for your email list, leave a comment on your recent blog, save your recent blog to Pinterest, or um, something along those lines. Um, so definitely consider a call to action for your bio and putting a more actionable link inside of your bio. Okay, so that's it for me today. I've reviewed a bunch of different accounts on Pinterest and Instagram but the thing that I want to mention is is a lot of you are making a lot of the same similar I don't want to say mistakes but avoidable 
things. There are things you can avoid doing and the things that you can do to better your Instagram traffic and your Pinterest traffic. But the thing that I want you to know is that inside of our Ivory Mix VIP membership, you get exclusive access as a VIP to our Pinterest trainings and our Instagram trainings. Not only that, you get unlimited access to all of our stock photos for creating your graphics and your Instagrams. Uh, you get social media quotes, you get captions, and there's even more coming related to blog post templates and Canva templates for creating your uh, your Instagram and your Pinterest content. So it's an unbelievable membership that I really think you should take a look at. So go to ivorymix.com forward slash membership and get signed up because the VIP membership is only open for a limited time. That's it for me today. We'll see you next time. I will continue doing these reviews every now and then, so keep on following me at ivorymix.com, and we'll see you next time.